This afternoon, I'm delighted to have two incredible speakers. Our first is Dr. Dennis Maletti. Some of you know Professor Maletti. He's been, um, he spent decades examining hazards and disasters. Here are just some examples of his experience. He was appointed by President Reagan as part of the US delegation to the Soviet Union to give advice about an earthquake in the 1980s. He directed the investigation of evacuation out of the World Trade Center, the towers on 9-11, to the US Congress. At the request of the White House, he summarized knowledge about all natural hazards facing our nation. The result remains the most cited book worldwide on the topic. Governor Schwarzenegger appointed him to the California Seismic Safety Commission to advise our state about earthquake legislation. He chaired the Board of Visitors to FEMA's National Training Center for Emergency Managers during the Clinton administration. He chaired the Committee on National Hazards in the National Academy of Sciences, and he's consulted on emergency planning to corporations and national governments at home and abroad. Closer to home, Dr. Maletti was a member of the Advocacy, no, Advisory. <laughs> I've only been here since 6 o'clock. <laughs> the Advisory Council to the Southern California Earthquake Center, where he helped them invent two things that might be familiar to you. The brochure, Putting Down Roots in Earthquake Country, and the annual shakeout exercise. And we are so lucky to have Dr. Maletti living in Rancho Mirage. Otherwise, we'd have to pay a fortune. And we get him for free. Please welcome Dr. Maletti. <laughs> Thank you, you Marsha. Marsha and I are friends, and she knows many things about me. So I want to thank her and acknowledge her for only sharing things with you that make me sound grown up. <laughs> the, the topic of my talk this afternoon is after the quake. The first seven days after the big one. So if you've ever wondered what it's going to be like to be here when that earthquake happens, today I'm going to tell you. So what's the big one? The big one is an earthquake that's going to shake harder than anyone alive in California has ever experienced. It's going to last longer than anyone alive in California has ever experienced. The area that it's going to impact is all of Southern California. So you may remember the Northridge earthquake that caused damage in Northridge and a little bit in Santa Monica. This is going to cause damage in all of Southern California. And the probability it has is it's the most likely great earthquake in America. The area that's going to be impacted are these counties. You can see the Salton Sea at the bottom of the screen. It, Riverside County, uh, Orange County, San Bernardino County, Los Angeles County, Ventura County, and whatever that county is above Ventura County. I forgot the name right now. Uh, the technical basis for what I'm going to share this afternoon are damage estimates that were put together for this earthquake by earth scientists and engineers, uh, estimates of public behavior by social scientists from all past earthquakes ever investigated, and government response estimates by the State Office of Emergency Services and the California Seismic Safety Commission. The details were extracted from a public report, and that's uh, Lucy Jones et al. 2008, which was prepared when knowledge about this earthquake was first revealed to those of us who live here. Uh, and the contents of that report from which this talk comes was endorsed by everyone but God. When disasters happen, there are 17 traditional emergency response functions that governments have in their emergency response plans. All governments have them in their emergency response plan. 
uh, media coverage, search and rescue, medical services, sheltering, fire suppression, uh, traffic management, uh, emergency operations centers, communication. I'm not gonna cover all 17. We're only gonna go over some because I only have a half an hour to present this. The first thing I wanna talk about is media coverage. Okay, put on your seatbelts. You're going on the earthquake ride. The first five minutes after the ground stopped shaking, all operable media in Southern California will switch to ongoing coverage on every channel on television. People who went through the earthquake will turn on the working electronic media if they have access to it and start talking about what they just experienced with people close to them. In 30 minutes, the media will be mobilized and report on local incidents. And scientists like Lucy will be at Caltech describing it to whoever it is that can receive the transmission. The average person in the first half hour is gonna invo be involved in massive information seeking and make attempts to contact other people. Most of the attempts to contact other people will be frustrated and people will begin to realize in the first half hour the true scope of the event. Two hours after the ground stopped shaking, there'll be ongoing coverage, and the ongoing coverage, which will be nationwide, will focus on big urban collapses. The national media will be mobilized, and governments will give guidance. What big urban collapses? the major high-rise buildings in downtown Los Angeles that collapse. There'll be several that do. In the first two hours, most of the information people who went through the event will get will come from radios. And people will begin shifting their perceptions from one of thinking about themselves to one of feeling quite generous and altruistic because they're gonna get that all of Southern California is a victim. And <clears throat> 24 hours, FEMA will be focused on Los Angeles due to the media reports. Information centers and governments will open from Sacramento to the counties, etc. Rumors will emerge among the people who live here. And there's gonna be wide variation in the quality and accuracy of information that's being provided to the public. Local media will actually be giving much more useful information than state or national media. National media will be reporting on casualties. The number of casualties reported will far exceed the number of casualties that actually exists. And they'll be discussing the governor's pending visit. One week after the event, people will be reporting on aftershocks, high profile damage, and talking about individual heroism stories. Persons who live like us in our normal houses will be uh, talking about fear of looting. Uh, the media will be fueling rumors about looting and government, particularly in Sacramento, will be stepping up vigorous efforts to stamp out misinformation and rumors. What will those of us who live here wish we had done? We'll wish we had bought a battery or crank-operated radio or radios. We'll wish we had more batteries. We'll wish we had satellite telephones. We'll wish we had solar car charges for small devices and car charges. We'll wish we had spent the money to buy a mechanism to talk to the people we love who are separated from us when the earthquake strikes. And we'll wish we learned how to tell rumors from facts and what to expect about public shelters. Search and rescue. My pictures, by the way, are all of California earthquakes. This is the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. In the first five minutes after the ground stopped shaking, there will be no search and rescue efforts undertaken. The first 
search and rescue efforts begin in that first five minutes, but they'll be begun by victims who will search for people who might be in bad shape in close vicinity to them. In half an hour, local search and rescue teams will mobilize in areas that have search and rescue teams, and national search and rescue teams will be notified. Victims will voluntarily search and rescue people, and they'll form into little work groups. They'll extract nearby victims, they'll use their hands, and whatever little bit of equipment they happen to have access to, and they'll dig through rubble incorrectly. Some of them will become victims when the piles of rubble collapse on them. In two hours, local teams, if they exist, will be deployed. They'll be focused on the more complex rescues. National teams will begin to mobilize, but everyone will have insufficient equipment and insufficient personnel to engage in an effective search and rescue. Extracting people will continue uh, amongst uh, the people who survived the quake, uh, the, the, the average citizen. More people will join and they'll begin using whatever available tools they happen to have. And if you're CERT trained, you'll have a little crowbar and a medium quality set of gloves, you'll be using that. If you don't have that, you'll be using your gardening gloves. Uh, one day after the earthquake, one day, 24 hours after the earthquake, the first organized major search and rescue teams uh, dispatched by the state of California will arrive at El Toro. And they'll initially be dispatched on the Los Angeles side of the fault. At that point in time, 95% of the victims that are rescued will have been rescued by other victims. And those people will need gloves and they'll need crowbars and they'll forge a social organization in the search and rescue groups that formed out of neighbors and strangers who band together to do what needed to be done. There'll be a person in charge, there'll be people who wipe the sweat off the people who are working brow, who go get water and bring it to them, etc. And then those functions will rotate inside the search and rescue group. Um, Intense work will continue for 72 hours. Few people doing search and rescue will sleep, and the number of live people they find will begin to decline rapidly after 72 hours. In one week, all the teams will be deployed that are ever going to be deployed. They'll be focused, however, uh, the search and rescue teams that come from around the world and throughout the United States of America will be focused on body recovery. Volunteer groups will begin to disband. They'll disband because of fatigue, low success rates at finding live people, and a lack of glove and tools. We can change that outcome. What will we wish we had as we're engaged in those search and rescue efforts? the top of the list, we'll wish that we had spent the money to increase the seismic integrity of our structures. We'll wish we had really heavy duty work gloves and several pairs. We'll wish we had more crowbars, long ones, because you get better leverage. We'll wish we had heavy duty first aid supplies. And we'll also wish we had sunblock, hats, canteens, and energy bars. We'll wish we had learned cert training. And we'll wish we had learned how to dig through rubble. These are all things that can be done ahead of time. We can actually change the outcome by doing what we call preparedness. Oops, medical services. This is the Northridge earthquake. In the first five minutes, the people who go through the earthquake will che check for injuries to themselves and others close by. In the first half hour, people will assess damage and, uh, in uh, hospitals, 
and off-duty staff will converge on to go to the hospital. Every off-duty worker at a, a, a medical facility will flood the medical facility. Um, some medically trained residents will volunteer to provide uh, medical treatment in the street. Others won't because they'll fear being sued and liability. Uh, and first aid will be delivered throughout Southern California by uh, victims. In the first two hours, uh, staff will arrive at all the major hospitals throughout Southern California. Outside, triage will begin, just as it did in Northridge. Um, and medical transport, getting people to the hospitals, will be at best difficult and most likely impossible. What will people do? People will volunteer to assist organized medical response. People who are not injured will go to the hospital to help the people in the hospital, which will become a problem for them. Uh, they will transport injured in a non-uniform way on hospitals because in disasters, people bring people they live next door to and people they love to the hospitals they know about. I only know about Eisenhower. So if I'm transporting somebody to a hospital, I will go to Eisenhower, as will everyone in the general vicinity of Eisenhower Hospital. Hospitals I don't know about will not get any victims. And so it's gonna be way out of balance. Uh, the state will manage available medical services. Medical teams in the, at the end of the first day again will arrive at El Toro. High damage hospitals will be evacuated. We'll begin the medical evacuation of non-quake patients outside of the area and outside of California. Uh, there'll be a non-uniform influx of victims, many with crushed muscles, broken bones, and other forms of trauma. And medical staff will experience role strain because they'll be at work, working nonstop, and they really want to, in their head, be with their family, but they'll keep working. Uh, uh, the average citizen will uh, uh, help contribute to the non-uniform influx of patients to medical centers, and people with first aid training will continue to give aid in neighborhoods. In three days, all seriously damaged hospitals in Southern California will be evacuated. Outside trauma centers will have been set up. Non-quake patients are, will all be med evacuated outside the area and state. There'll be a massive non-uniform influx of victims with crush injuries, broken bones, and trauma. People will continue to give first aid treatment to people in their neighborhood. One week later, there will be a more uniform distribution of patients across Southern California's hospitals. Uh, and there'll be fewer uh, trauma patients being uh, admitted. And victims uh, who are trained in first aid will continue to do it uh, because of increased injuries that occur from aftershocks. What will we wish we had? We'll wish we had strapped our heavy furniture to the wall, which could have avoided crushed muscles and broken bones. We'll wish we had strapped our heavy appliances to the walls, for that will reduce the number of injuries we'll experience. We'll actually lament that we didn't ever get around to putting earthquake hooks on the things hanging on our walls because that's, they're gonna fly across the room and whack people in the head. We'll wish we had quake latches on our cabinets that can be purchased for $1.29. And we'll wish we had purchased heavy duty first aid supplies. And we'll wish we had learned first aid and CPR, and we also will have wished we had learned not to run outside in an earthquake and not to get in a doorway and not to get in the triangle of life. Sheltering. San Francisco, 1906. In the first five minutes, organized response will do nothing about sheltering. 
Victims will examine their immediate setting and relocate uh, to somewhere else if they think where they are is unsafe. In the first half hour, organized response will do nothing about sheltering. People who are the victims will do more extensive damage assessment and consider staying or leaving home, going someplace else. Two hours after the event, there'll be discussions between the Office of Emergency Services at the county level, at the state level, Red Cross, and local government with operable communications to determine the number, locations, and shelter logistics. People will begin to see that damage is occurring from uh, aftershocks and finally make the decision about whether they need to abandon their home or not. 24 hours after the event, a few Red Cross shelters will open at schools, recreation areas, <clears throat> and regional care and shelter task forces will be established to develop strategy, care and shelter locations need to be identified. And throughout all of Southern California, at the end of the first day, you can expect 120 shelters to be up and running. People like us will begin to congregate in unplanned shelters that get set up in parks, vacant lots, and in the street. Many will arrive at the homes of friends and relatives and try to check into hotels. On the east side of the San Andreas, that's us, most people will be camped outside their property and re-enter homes for supplies. One bonus we have is a lot of golf courses. That's where we'll be. There it is, there's the slide. Um, could you leave the picture up rather than go to me? Uh, I, I want people to focus on the topic, not me. If you wanna look at me, just look. Thank you. Uh, 72 hours later, most Red Cross shelters will be set up, set up throughout the area. Supplies will begin arriving at staging areas and being distributed to shelters. Most shelters will be at capacity. Victims will have many unmet needs. Unplanned shelters will be in need of supplies and compete with organized shelters for what the state can get to us. And the unplanned shelters and even the planned shelters will be populated largely by the poor and families with dependent children. One week later, the regional shelter network will be fully established and up and running. Uh, all shelters that will ever be established will be in place. There'll be a total of 503 shelters throughout Southern California. Unplanned shelters, however, that's groups of neighbors banding together, uh, will in increasingly be organized and supplies will be arriving to where they are one way or another. It'll be spontaneous. What will we wish we had done about shelter? We'll wish we had bought a comfortably sized tent. We'll wish we had bought an extra tent to give the neighbors. We'll wish we had ways to light the dark nights. We'll wish we had bought portable air conditioners, ice makers, heating devices, and a power source for them that operates independent of the grid. And we'll wish we had learned how to keep cool and how to keep warm without electricity, a skill people who once lived in the desert, for example, had before electricity was invented. Food and water. San Francisco, 1906. In the first five minutes, victims will check how much water they've got on hand. In the first half hours, people will check to see what stored supplies they have. And if they don't have any water stored, they'll begin to consider what they might do for when they turn on their taps the only water that'll come out is that which is in any unbroken segment of pipe up to their sink, and it's probably gonna be muddy. In two hours, the Red Cross and NGOs will mobilize and begin to identify sources to provide, resources to provide to shelters. Regional water needs will be assessed. 
Nobody's going to be bringing anybody any water. They're assessing water needs. Almost everyone that's a victim will have some food and water at this point. Victims will be sharing food and water with organized responders. Trained Red Cross volunteers will begin to arrive in two hours at staging areas. End of the first day. On the west side, that's LA, organized shelters will be providing victims what they need. On the east side, that's us, it will be very slow to establish shelters, provide food and water, and assemble volunteers due to the damage we'll have. They're, they'll lack the ability to get from point A to point B. Uh, victims will begin at the end of 24 hours to need water and look to government to supply it. And also to supply them if they don't have it with supplies. I'm not saying government should supply it. I'm just saying they'll be looking to government for it. Uh, and people will begin to go to grocery and convenience stores to collect needed supplies. Some of them will be labeled looters by the media and local authorities. In the first three days, local, state, and federal governments will coordinate with each other and bring food and water to the region. Some water will begin to arrive, but most will still be en route. Victims, however, will be running out of food and water and making demands on local government. Victims who are still camped out on their front lawns and in golf courses and, will, and will be reliant on their own supplies, but they'll be running out of them. At the end of a week, consistent supplies and free water and free food will be coming out of a cornucopia to staging areas throughout Southern California, and it'll be distributed to organized shelters, spontaneous shelters, and people camped on their lawns. Pockets of isolated rural residents will still be without food and water. People where we live at the end of the first week um, who still have supplies will be sharing them with other people. And some people will be selling water and supplies at greatly inflated prices. What will we wish we had done? We'll wish that we had what we needed to eat and drink as we lived outside for seven to 10 days. We'll wish we had extras for unprepared neighbors, stranded motorists and visitors. We'll wish we had learned we really do need to be self-reliant. We'll wish we had learned water is for more than drinking. We'll wish we learned that we'd be overwhelmed by our generosity and give most of our stuff away. And we'll wish we had learned that only cash will work for buying anything. Fire suppression. The first five minutes after the earthquake, people will flee fires. In the first half hour, fire departments will attempt to locate fires that have begun and begin fighting them, but there'll be too many of them for them to respond to. Localized fires will be fought by you and I, the victims, and will be using any available resources we have. In two hours on the west side, that's LA, local firefighters will be responding to ignitions within jurisdictional boundaries. On the east side, that's us, prioritize work to suppress fires, request mutual aid will occur, uh, but equipment cannot cross the fault rupture. Please recollect that Riverside County will be torn in half. The fault will rupture across the whole thing. Uh, and uh, many fires will be burning and become larger. Small fires in the first two hours that are discovered early can be extinguished. Large fires that aren't fought by organized response will be burning out of control. Some victims will assist organized firefighters. This is a picture of a mobile home park in the Northridge earthquake. In the first 24 hours, the first wave of mutual aid will arrive at critical incidents, but only in accessible areas. Highly damaged areas 
that are inaccessible will not be reached for fire suppression. Evacuations in, will be initiated for large uncontrolled fires. In the first three days, most mutual aid will be in place and most and major fires are be, will be being f fought and some will be extinguished. However, there will be several large conflagrations. When did you last hear that word? <laughs> you know about San Francisco. Several large conflagrations will be burning in Los Angeles. One will be in South Central LA. 80% of the evacuees from the earthquake will evacuate because of fire. Victims, that's us, in the first three days will be vigilant about monitoring our surroundings to try to suppress fires that begin. And after one week, most major fires will be extinguished and there'll be enough mutual aid between fire departments across the nation to help. And uh, over 150,000 residential units will have burnt to the ground and uh, 180,000 people will be evacuated and homeless because of fires. Um, my last topic, and then I'll get to, is this. What will we wish we had done as the fires burn? First, we'll wish we had bought more fire extinguishers. Second, we'll wish we had done more things to keep fires from starting. You know, you can do things that keep fires from happening after earthquakes. We'll wish we had learned what they were and that we had done it. We'll wish we had learned how to keep fire extinguishers working. You know they don't sit in a closet for three years and work. You've got to do something to keep them working. Uh, we wish, we'll wish we had learned how to prevent electrical and gas fires. We'll wish we had learned how to enhance mobile home safety. That particular home type is the most vulnerable to fire. Uh, we'll wish we had learned how to quickly and safely extinguish fires, another skill that's part of the things you pick up in cert training. And we'll wish we had learned, particularly those of us in the desert, how to prevent fires in empty houses for the snowbirds that aren't here when the earthquake happens. And we'll wish we had learned that we needed to get ready for fires as much as shaking. Root recovery, this is the Northridge earthquake. Do you love that? Imagine looking, I'm looking for photographs about root recovery and I find one that says Los Angeles city limit and the bridge is down. Just what a find that was. I was so happy when I found that. <laughs> In the first half hour, most root obstacles will be reported and <clears throat> People that have heavy equipment will be trying to locate it to remove the rubble. Uh, what the average person will be doing is attempting to get home to reunite with the people they love. But they're gonna encounter obstacles on the road and they're gonna encounter traffic jams and some of them will be stranded on roads due to the obstacles, road damage and bridge damage. In the first two hours, most of the major route obstacles will be identified, reported to the Office of Emergency Services, the California Highway Patrol, Caltrans, etc. They'll all work together to make priorities about what they do first. And agencies will be well aware of stranded motorists on highways that need assistance. Now, imagine I-10 if the traffic can't move. Those are the stranded motorists. Uh, in the first two hours, um, some of the stranded motorists are gonna remain in the, their vehicles and others will begin walking. And the, at the end of the first day, critical access routes will have all been identified throughout Southern California. Priorities will be set for debris removal by a transportation task force located in Sacramento uh, where we live on the east side, there'll be little route recovery. Palm Springs Airport will remain open. Okay, you need to be happy about that. The runways 
will be operable. And the new tower they built, they built as a result of this 2008 report that said the old one would collapse. And so that one should still be there. However, none of us will be allowed to use it. <laughs> That's going to be the only way anybody's going to be able to get anything here. Stranded motorists at the end of the first day are going to begin to get rescued. They're going to begin to reach us and uh, expect a little help from us, and our generosity will provide it. And a great deal of root innovation will occur. What do I mean by that? A lot of people are going to be riding bicycles. And those of us who own four-wheel drive vehicles will be putzing around on them. After three days, access will be restored in most, on most major highways in Los Angeles that were designated a high priority. This state knows how to move when earthquakes happen. And all major airports in Southern California will be functioning and the LA subway will be back in operation. At the end of one week, greater recovery of secondary streets will have been made. Use of uh, detours will be in place. Some bridges will finally get inspected and opened. Uh, where we are in uh, the east side, I-10 will remain impassable and still will not be able to be crossed. What will we wish we had done to design this horror out of our lives? First, we'll wish we had bought a bicycle with a big basket on the steering thing and a pump to put air in the tires. Second, we'll wish we had a rough terrain vehicle and we'll wish we had parked it outside despite what the HOA president says. <laughs> we'll wish we had bought X-bracing for our carports because no vehicle under a carport with things that hold it up that look like this will be standing. Anything, any vehicle parked under them, the roof will be on top of the cars, can't drive them. We'll wish we had learned no one is going to be leaving or arriving anytime soon when the ground stops shaking. And we'll wish we had really believed that there'd be very few first responders uh, available to help us. And we'll wish we had known that our garage doors won't open. One conclusion, I'd like to leave you with one conclusion. There's only one takeaway from everything I've said, just one. It's not the photo, it's the sentence underneath, which I invented for this talk for you. Nature will cause the quake, but what we don't do will cause the consequences. And friends, I invite you to visit RanchoMiragePreparedness.org. It's your city's website. It really does contain everything you need to know.